Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shiv Kumar, head of the department, Civil Engineering, Jim's Engineering Management Technical Campus. So, in this lecture, we will talk about today the load bearing walls and some miscellaneous topic like roof covering, floor covering, wall coverings, and other joints, etc. So, let's start with the load bearing masonry construction. First of all, we should understand that what is load bearing wall. The load bearing wall are those walls on which the load of superstructure that may be a slab, that may be a upper floor is transferred through this load bearing wall to the foundation followed by to the soil. A modern example of load bearing masonry construction for a residential building Note the absence of concrete column and beams. So it is mentioned in the PPT as well as it has been shown in that image that there is no column provided in the building. Also, there is no beam is available in that building. So load bearing masonry construction was the most widely used form of construction for large buildings from 1700 year to the mid of 1900. It is very rarely used today for large buildings, but smaller residential scale structures are being built still on the same pattern. It essentially consists of thick, heavy masonry wall of brick or stone, which support the entire structure, including the horizontal Floor slab, which could be made of reinforced concrete or RCC concrete or a steel member or a wood. So totally the load is transferring through the wall to the foundation followed by soil. In contrast, most construction today is not load bearing masonry because these are the frame structures. The frame structure means the building or the which have the column, beams, etc. of strong material and other strong material that support floor, slab and heavy and have very thin and light internal and external walls. The key idea of this construction is very well wall acts as a load carrying elements in a load bearing structure. Even you cannot punch hole in the wall and connect to rooms. You would damage the structure if you did so. So immense weight of the wall actually helps to hold the building together and stabilize it against external forces such as wind and earthquake. So here we can see the building of I am Ahmedabad, India, which is designed by the architect Lois Kahn. Now come to the why load bearing wall construction not used today. As a, we can see that nowadays, especially in Delhi and CR, so we'll find that the multi-story building or high rise building. So as far as the load is concerned, the high rise buildings definitely have a load or a overload or a huge load that has to be transferred through uh, the soil, through the foundation to the soil. So it is necessary to provide the frame structure that is a RCC beam columns because the building has to be earthquake resistant also. So it does not perform because uh, the when we talk about the load bearing walls, it does not perform very well in earthquakes. Most deaths in earthquakes around the world have occurred in the load bearing masonry building because they are not earthquake resistant. It is extremely labor intensive and it is built mainly of masonry, which is made by hand. So women have still not developed a machine that produces or that can help in the masonry. So this also makes for a very slow construction speed in comparison to the modern construction method. It is extremely material intensive 
these buildings consume a lot of bricks and are very heavy this means that they are not green as all this material has to be trucked around from the where it is produced to the site now types of so this is about the load bearing wall in general in the frame structure most of the walls are the partition wall so they can be uh, the walls can be divided into two categories the first one is the load bearing and second second one is the uh, non load bearing or the partition wall so next we will talk about the finishing materials which is being used for the various uh, members like uh, wall floor ceiling and roof so finishing material are those material which improve the aesthetic or appearance of the building from the inside and the outside too there are different types of finishes and materials are available in the market which is being used nowadays in the modern construction so inherent finishes and applied finishes are two types of finish for the building fabric the inherent finish provide natural finish because further work no need for example materials such as timber stone brick and the glass the applied finishes are material such as type of paint plaster timber wall steel corrugated steels and there are so many materials which can be used in the applied finishes <coughs> now the first category in this slide is the floor finishes a variety of finish finishes and multiple colors and textures are available nowadays the choice will be dictated by several factors such as the context of the building and the client's requirement so based on the requirement yeah everything is totally uh, totally based on the requirement of the client so based on the requirement there are so many types of floor finishes available in the market like brick stone rendering tiling wood floor covering terrazzo asphalt rubber linoleum sheet glass floor covering concrete floor covering mosaic floor covering work, uh, cork floor covering magnesite floor covering and last vinyl asbestos tiles so you can see here in that image here we have shown that uh, the brick floor here we have provided in the building and then next one is the stone floor finishes nowadays uh, there are two types of material which are extensively used in the floor finishing which one is the stone and the tiles also sometimes we provide the wooden flooring in the master bedroom or in a drawing room as well so we'll we see that some kinds of flooring which are shown in that different images the first one in that the tiling work is being done the next one is the wooden flooring which is comparatively more looks more impressive and impressing the next one is the terrazzo flooring in which the small marble, marble chips are used the next is the glass floor covering here we can see that the glass are used for the flooring next is the mosaic floor covering so there are so many types of floor finishes in which some of them are shown in that images next is the wall finishes there are different kinds of wall finishes available in the market the like as that this is the conventional type of wall finishes which is known as the plastering this is one of the oldest method of wall finishes the next is the tiling skirting wallpapers painting dry linings molding and archi traves so in the first image you can see that the plastering how it is being done by manually because nowadays machines are available but this is a manual method of plastering almost few mm of plastering is required to finish is the masonry work or the wall finishes <clears throat> or some time for the roof finishes as well so here we can see that the paste of mortar is being pasted on the wall and spread and make them 
smooth to improve the aesthetic. In the next figure image, we can see that the different kinds of tiling. In the third image, the skirting had been shown in that because in the lowest portion of the wall where it connects to the floor, the skirting is provided because skirting is uh, uh, protecting the wall finishes from sometimes of cleaning equipment, sometimes we can, what we do, okay, sometimes we can hit or sometimes some item may hit from the base. So it may cause some issues in the aesthetic of the wall. So it is provided the protection as well as the beautification to the wall. The next, we can see that the wallpaper, it has been applied on the wall. You can see a leaf are there. The next is the wall painting. So wall painting, here we can see that the two kinds of a painting. The first one is the, the paint which we have applied on the wall, which is yellow and whitish in color. And another one is the painting which we have another kind of painting which artistic work we can apply to improve the aesthetic of the wall. <clears throat> the next is the dry linings. So in dry linings, we provide some uh, frame of wood and uh, that will be covered by either by the some gypsum board, sometimes by the wooden covering or sometimes we provide the other material as well, which are available in the market as per the requirement of the client. Now we'll talk about the ceiling finishes. There are multiple materials which we have mentioned in the slide, like uh, plasterboard, plasterboard co-molding, steel lathing, plastering, ceiling lining, ceiling tile, and so on, followed by the PVC cladding and ceiling painting. So here we can see that the types of roof or ceiling covering. The first one is the plasterboard, which is applied on that here. You can see that the what kind of a plasterboard is applied and how they are applying on that roof, you no know, ceiling. The next one is the ceiling linings. This may be of PVC, this may be of wooden, this may be of other material as well. And then here we can see that the ceiling papers, like it is more like uh, the wallpapers, but we have applied on the ceiling to improve the aesthetic. And then the next image, we can see that the PVC cladding is made up of PVC and the fixed in the grooves. And here is the ceiling painting. The next is the roof finishes. Roof means top of the slab. The corrugated steel, profiled light aluminum, wood shingles, concrete tiles, clay tiles, glazed. There are so many materials which are available and there are so many materials other than which I have mentioned is available in the market. So we are covering a um, few important kinds of finishes which are being used in the modern construction. Here we can see that the corrugated steel, which is applied in the first image, then wood shingles at the roof. And here we can see that the glazed roof. Glazed roof are those which is made up of the glass and not only it improves the aesthetic, but also allows sunlight to penetrate in the room and thus reduce the electricity consumption in the house. Here we can see that the cement slate roof which is generally of blackish or dark grayish in color. And here we can see that the lightweight metallic coverings. So <clears throat> this is all about the covering of different types, which have been shown in the previous slides. Now you talk about the concrete joints in the building and their characteristics. So first one is the expansion joint. These are the structural separation between the building elements that allow independent movement without damage to the assembly. An expansion joint is used in concrete and steel. An expansion joints which allow the concrete or steel to expand or concrete with daily temperature variations. Now, if you don't allow this, you may get buckling or spalling or sometimes total failure. They are commonly provided in the bridge, railway tracks, piping system, and other structures. So here we will see in the image, 
that the this in the first image you can see that the expansion joint in the concrete bridge whenever you go on the, any flyover then you will find that some spaces on which you will feel some jerk in the vehicle here we can see the another type of expansion joint in steel plate girder bridge if you have visited to the delhi and from the dnd flyover then there you can see the this kind of expansion joint in steel plate girder bridge here is the expansion joint in the building which is covered with the plate the next is the contraction joint or control joints a control joints or contraction joint is a joint that is put in the concrete to control cracking control joints arcs or grooves made in concrete or asphalt at a regular intervals these joints are made at different locations where there are chance to crack or uh cracks where the concentration of the stress are expected so that when a concrete does not crack the location will be known to you here we can see in the concrete the contraction joint the next last is the construction joint the construction joints occur when there are multiple concrete placement it can occur between different days of concrete placement in mega projects there are starting and stopping points the entire work may not be done at once hence concrete pouring needs to be stopped causing a joint in element known as the construction joint here we can see that image this is the construction joint so friends this is all about the today's topic we will meet again discuss on a some different topic which is lead introduction till then thanks to all of you goodbye